One of the greatest boons to the internal combustion engine becoming the most popular engine in cars to date is the invention of the self-starter. Invented in the early 1900s by Charles Kettering, formerly of National Cash Register and having moved on to General Motors, it was first used in Cadillac automobiles. In this video, we're going to show you how to assemble an average 1930s to 1960s Delco Remy starter. Stay tuned. Here we have a 738T starter from a 1939 gram. The same starter is used from 1938 through 1941 covering both Spirit of Motion and Hollywood cars. On this particular starter you will see that we have an upper arm with a plate. This is the point where the starter pedal pushes on that plate, rotating the arm, bringing this boss against the switch here providing power for the starter to rotate but at the same time it kicks an arm you can't see at the moment pushing the Bendix drive back against the flywheel and the ring gear to engage it so we engage it mechanically as well as we turn it with electricity creating the rotation to start the automobile the assembly right here is the throttle cracker as I refer to it that Graham would use which slightly opens your throttle on your car at the same time. We'll talk about that maybe a little later. But in general, all Delco Remy starters are going to be quite similar. The differences are in this area right here. We'll talk about that real quick and then get into the actual assembly. Here, as we were saying, is the electric switch that the arm will activate with the boss right here. This provides the power for the starter, so it's going to rotate once that is done. At the same time, though, I'm going to show you what really happens. When I push this, which is as if I'm the starter pedal in the car, you notice it brings the Bendix assembly back to the rear. This would engage it with the starter ring gear. So that portion is done mechanically. Now on some of these starters, you would have right here a big solenoid that would do all this with electric power and you wouldn't have the arm here on top. Other versions, such as they might use in a Ford or a Hudson, have a remote solenoid controlling the power. So there are slight variations in that area, but all of them are going to do the same thing. They're going to kick the gear to the back, as we're showing here, to engage it with your ring gear on your flywheel. And again, the power is going to then rotate the electric motor and turn the engine over for starting. First thing you're going to need is something such as this 28 ounce tomato can that we've got. This was a Contadina, but you can see it's painted because we also use it when we are painting up the parts for the starter. But this is very necessary for assembly. If you don't have something like this, you're going to have difficulty holding on to what you have to hold on to to put this starter back together. The reason I'm saying that is you have to have a way to stand the starter, such as I'm showing here, in order to reassemble it. Otherwise, you're going to find this very difficult to do. So you do need to procure a can of about that size or have saved one up for the purpose. Now down inside your starter, you're going to have wanted to remove every bit of dirt you can possibly remove. Yes, it's not clean. Don't try to scrub things clean. I'm just talking about heavy dirt. Get that out of the way. If things are really rusty, such as you're really rusty here, you want to gently remove that rust. Really, I suggest seriously using small wire brushes and a moto tool is the easiest way of doing it. You'll notice down inside there are four brushes clear down there in the bottom. They're spring loaded. Those four brushes could be replaced if they needed to be, but you can see we've got a tremendous amount of brush material still here. So we're going to use the brushes that are in the starter on this one. This particular starter, what we were mostly dealing with is a missing part, as well as everything had to be refinished in order for the starter to look decent as well as function well. So we know the starter worked in the first place. We know the brushes were good. But now we're going to show you how we're going to deal with those brushes because you can't put the starter back together with the brushes in that position. And you can see here I've set four blocks of wood next to the starter. We have four brushes. We're going to need four blocks of wood. We're going to prop those brushes out of the way in order to assemble the starter 
back the way it was supposed to be together. Now something to keep in mind is I'm showing you how to assemble it. Reverse the video and you know exactly how to take it apart also. So we will now show you why we have to push our brushes out of the way. Here is our electric motor assembly. It's going to rotate in there. You can see this end is the copper end. Now if this were all messed up, we would worry about refinishing that, but this isn't. It's got some discoloration, but this is a working starter. So all we've done is clean this off real well. And this particular area is the area that sits between the brushes. So if we don't bring the brushes out, this won't slide back into the case at all. And that's how we're going to use our little blocks in a moment. I'll show you how they're mounted in order to put it together. Here you can see how I put the four blocks in place. The blocks don't have to be pretty. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to allow you to prop those brushes back. They're all spring-loaded. You need to prop them back and you need wooden blocks so you don't damage your brushes. All right, on our assembly that we're going to put in here, you'll notice that they always have a fiber sort of washer in this point. You need to be sure it's still on there before you lower this in place. Now, of course, this may well fall off and I'll have to tease it in place, but you got to make sure the fiber washer is in place when you reassemble. So you see it fell off, which I figured it would. I'll get a screwdriver and push it over. As you can see, I've centered up the fiber washer with a screwdriver. Now we're going to lower our armature assembly into the starter, trying to keep it straight so we don't move that little washer down there. And there we got it back in the hole. So we've got that portion of the assembly done. We can pull out the wooden blocks. Here we have the three main components we're going to work with with the next assembly. This is your mount that goes on the back of your starter, and your starter is going to mount to your flywheel housing with this. This is the lower arm that you couldn't see when it was assembled. These two pieces here that look kind of like round uh, little dowels, they actually go right here. And this is your complete Bendix drive. So when you push on your pedal up above, it rotates and pushes like that, pushing the assembly back towards the ring gear. Now all of this has to go together into our housing that is our base, our mount for our starter. This particular lever, just to show you, goes in here thusly on this starter. You'll notice I'm to the side. I am not putting this piece over. You can't do that, but this is how it goes. It goes to the side the way I'm showing you. But we also have to have the Bendix drive in there at the same time. So this gets a little futzy. It's not impossible. You notice how I rotate that in there. But we have to put three parts together roughly at the same time. So we'll start by bringing our assemblies. Thusly, we're going to put this in. We're going to bring our Bendix drive. You notice I had to kind of tip everything together and it goes like that. That's all the further you're going to put it together for the moment because you got the three parts in the proper relationship. All right, now we're going to need our special shouldered bolt. We're going to need our return spring. It goes on like this, this one forward, this one to the side. Then we're going to put it through our hole and we're going to line up there's a hole in our arm that we've got to put the upper piece of the return spring in. That's got to go in there, so we start that in there. We've got to put our other return spring piece in the slot like I just did. And then we've got to get this all tapped over, which I'm going to do. I suggested a rubber mallet, but I'm going to do it with a paper towel and a ball-peen hammer. Paper towel folded about four times. Tap it in with the ball-peen hammer. So now we've got that together. We've got our return spring here and here, all set. Flip it over, put our lock washer in place, put our replated nut, and that was done with our zinc plating. And we're going to tighten this up with a 5 8 wrench. Here we have a special but important washer. This goes on the end of the armature shaft towards the side where the flywheel is. 
These, I have found, are sometimes missing from the starters because people forget them and don't realize they're important. This one had to be made because it was missing. It is a thickness here of about 58, 60 thousandths is where you're going to have to be with it, which is an odd size. And it obviously has to be sized to fit the shaft. We'll show you where. Outside diameter here is 800 and about 16 thousandths. So it is an odd size special washer that you need to be putting in made of steel. We'll show you where it goes. And you notice here, this is where it drops on the armature shaft. There is a shoulder. This drops down, sits on that shoulder. If that is not in there, what's going to happen is your bendix is going to go too far back into your flywheel and your ring gear, and the bendix will prematurely wear and fail. We have our mount assembly containing our bendix. We have our assembly before we put the armature in. First thing we're going to want to do, because this was all clean before, we're going to put a little bit of our assembly lube right up here. And this is the special mix that we will use when we're assembling engines. That's explained in our supercharger uh, videos if you want to know about that. Note, there is a cutout here, just like we had a cutout for the spring. This is the cutout that matches the little post on your case. That gives you full orientation when you're putting this back together. First thing we obviously have to slide that Bendix on. And you see there's teeth inside of here and there are teeth here. We're going to have to make sure everything lines up for the teeth. Now you'll notice, even though I showed you where the washer goes, the only time you can put it in is right now. You see, because you have to have your Bendix passed, then you put your washer on here, get it to futz on, there it's on. Now you finish putting your assembly down. And then we have to succeed in getting our shaft to go through the opening on top and bring it down just as I did so we're on the post. So that's done. Here we have the two special bolts that are going to hold the starter case to the starter base. In order to put that together, you're going to see why, again, we wanted this size of can because what we're going to do is we're going to flip it around and this portion is going to go in the can. The ears will rest on the top of the can. It'll keep everything in alignment. But remember, when you're flipping, you got to hold it together because nothing's holding this together right now. That's the position you should end up when you flip it. Now you're going to want it in this position because you have to put these bolts in here and you have to successfully thread them into holes which are way down here on this end. And this takes some futzing around sometime. I got that one real easy. You see it's threading in. Now we'll put the other bolt here. Same thing. We got to find our hole down there and get it to start threading. And as I said, sometimes you have to wiggle them around and futz with them till you get them. We'll finish that off camera and be back with you. Here we have a 3 8 wrench to tighten up those long bolts. But if we use the wrench this way, we're going to mar up the paint. So we're going to make a no mar wrench out of it. A little blue painter's tape. And we're going to cut a couple of strips and make our no mar wrench. One side, and we'll put the opposite side on here. So now we have a Nomar wrench, or at least a Lomar wrench. We'll use it to tighten up our little bolts here. Now we're going to take our starter off of our can or our stand, and we're going to set it down. You notice I've been working on top of a towel. Well, here's a real good reason for the towel so I don't gym up everything now that I've got that portion of it done. And we're going to continue our assembly of the starter. Next, we're going to need to have our foot pedal. Foot pedal goes like this. You can see there's the wear pattern from where the rod on the pedal in the car really does hit this particular piece in the car. So this, when you go put it in and you step on it, yep, paint's going to get scratched. That's the way it would have been when you bought the car back in the day. This particular item goes here. So we're going to be mounting it up next. There's your pedal. Here's your bolt. You have two flat washers, 
one that goes directly under the head. That would be on this side of the starter pedal. The other one goes on the opposite side of the starter pedal. Then you have a lock washer, then you have a nut. So that is the order of assembly, and it's all going to assemble through that hole right there. We're going to pick this up, put our washer on, put it through the hole, and notice you have two little feet, one on each side of the lower arm. So one foot on each side of the lower arm. I've got to hold on to it, put my other flat washer on the back, my lock washer on the back, and now we're going to put our nut on the back and get that all started together. And then we'll get some wrenches and we'll tighten that all up. Here we have our little box that came from Amazon. I'm giving you the numbers on the side of the box. This is the switch that fits on the top of this starter. You can buy them brand new. Don't even bother your time trying to fix the one that was on there. Because you can get these for, I believe I bought this for just under $20. We do have Amazon Prime, so we're not paying shipping on top of that. There's your brand new starter switch, as you saw on the other starter that we showed you at the beginning of the video. There's absolutely no reason to not get a brand new one. Now, the next thing you should know about this particular switch, they're for sale on eBay at the same time. You'll find them for double the price. They're obviously buying from Amazon and they're doubling the price to sell it to you on eBay. This is not an item to buy on eBay. This is one you want to get off of Amazon or don't pay more than the $20 price if you go to an auto parts store. It'll come with the starter switch. This is exactly correct. You can see the inside here, how it makes contact. Another reason you don't like to use your old one, these will be badly pitted and probably not usable. Your point on your starter here, you should try to clean up as much as you can with a wire brush in a moto tool. They also come with your proper nut and lock washer. This piece goes right like that. And you'll find you have two screw holes right there. Here are the original screws that we have cleaned up and plated, as well as the original washers that have been plated with zinc. We cleaned up the tops of them, made them look good again by putting them in a Sureline lathe and spinning them and using a file real carefully to clean them up. So I'll put that all together on top of the starter now. Here we have our throttle cracker clamp. You can see a bolt tightens down, tightens this together, and we grab something that goes in that hole. This goes in this hole here, and we're going to use a very small cotter pin on the back side. Here we have the original tag from this starter, kind of beat up and unusable. We also have the original drive nails or drive screws. I've seen both terms used. They go in the two holes, one here, one here on the side of the starter. We've got brand new ones that we're now going to install. Here we have our brand new tags stamped with all the information. Brand new drive screws. You can see they sort of have like a teeth pattern, sort of like a screw on them. And we're going to drive them into the holes here. And that's best done with a little ball peen hammer. All right, here I have a new old stock oil filler cap, like the one that was on here. I bought a bunch of these on eBay. You might even be able to buy them new. It goes in the little hole here on the end of your starter. This is where you're going to put a drop of oil occasionally, according to how often it says in your owner's manual. And you set it in, and we'll give it a little tap here. And to make sure we don't really gym it up, we're going to take one of our wood blocks and we're going to start driving it into the hole. And these really are just driven in like that. But you can see, you drive it in like that. That's not going to pop out. If we ever want to change it, we basically, most of the time you end up ruining them, but they're usually all uh, corroded and useless anyway, so it's best to replace them. So there's your replacement oil filler cap. And as I said, you need about a drop of oil in there occasionally at the rate the manufacturer tells you to put it in in the owner's manual. All right here we have the original band that goes around the starter to cover up the openings or the windows as I might call them here. And you put that on and I'll show you that once I have it in place. 
Here we have our band installed on the starter. You'll notice it has a clasp. It's fairly hard to get the clasp on, and it should be, so it will stay in place. But now that's on the starter. Now the two things you have to do at this point is you've probably, no matter what you've done, you probably scratched something or found something that's not perfect on your paint. You're going to have to go back and touch it up. This is one of the reasons I favor for something like a starter. Instead of automatically powder coating, you're better off rattle canning something like this because then you can touch it up easily. And I'll show you a quick way to touch it up. In order to do touch-ups, you need paint touch-up wands like these. I've suggested maybe in other videos. You can get these on Amazon for like 100 for somewhere around 5 to $10. Don't go to an auto paint store. They're going to charge you way too much for them. You spray your paint into your cap with your rattle can. And you can use this to touch up places real easily. It's very inexpensive and you'll be able to touch up a little scratch or something that you might have made. Remember we talked about our throttle cracker clamp that is on a Gram starter. This is the original tube that goes in there. You notice it's a brass tube. I have not yet completely cleaned the solder out of it by heating it up. We're going to have to heat this up, clean the solder out, and we'll show you on the other one that's done the complete assembly for a throttle cracker and give you dimensions on it real quick. All right, here's the completed throttle cracker. Let's tell you about the tube first. Remember I said it's brass. The tube, as Graham had it, is an inch and a half long. And diameter-wise, it comes in at 154 thousandths, roughly. As I said, it's a tube. I haven't cleaned that one out yet. Originally, the cables were steel. Every one of these I've seen had steel cables because it was completely rusty. The cable is, in fact, I believe that's a sixteenth. That's basically a sixteenth of an inch cable. And what we're using instead of steel is we use a stainless steel cable. Now, we told you we had an inch and a half here. The remaining length you need on this, I'll get you a measurement for it. The measurement for the rest of it is one and three quarters inches. So you need an inch and a half in here and one and three quarters to the back side of this little mount. This goes on your accelerator pedal. Now, the thing here that's important is we got a, another part we haven't shown you. Well, it's because it's missing from the car. We just got a parts car in for this. We're going to see if there's one of these. If there isn't, this would be a part we'll spin up on our Sureline lathe so that we can have a complete assembly for this car. You really do want the throttle cracker. It makes a difference. The stainless steel will still solder when you're going to solder this long a length and you're going to solder it over here. It will solder fine with regular solder because it's a woven piece and it will grab onto it. I've never had it fail. I'm told in Hollywoods this may not be a cable like it is in the Spirit of Motion cars, but every Spirit of Motion car I've seen so far that has the piece or what's left of the piece, it's always a cable. So this piece has to be completed on the starter we were showing you. This is the one we showed you at the beginning of the video. Now while we did a video showing an assembly of a Delco Remy Gram starter, this same basic assembly is going to be true of all starters from about the 1930s to the 1960s. They're Delco Remy starters. Hopefully we've given you enough information to feel like you could tackle the restoration on one of these. Remember, you can reverse it from the way we showed it to you and understand how to take it apart.